If you're new to Mahjong, try Cantonese style. I use Hong Kong scoring. I think it's one of the easiest to learn. All you need to do is gather four sets in a pair. The sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. The value of your hand is based on the sets that you have in your final hand. I have a link below the video to a player reference with scoring and on the back is a brief description of how to set up and play the game. If you're new to Mahjong or if you're an intermediate player and would like to improve your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. Click the bell so you don't miss anything. Let's do some random pulls, which is a really great exercise for seeing opportunities in your drawn hand. I have all my tiles out and they have been mixed. We're going to play a three fawn minimum because at Mahjong time, which is a really great online multiplayer game, they have tables where you have to get eight points or better and three fawn equates to eight points. So we're going to push ourselves to play three fawn hands. I am going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round. We'll start with east round and then we'll progress to south, west, and north. I'm going to just roll the dice here to see which seat we're in. That's not really part of the game, but it randomizes the variables for the practice. So I rolled a 10. 10 is south. So I'm going to put a 2 up just so we remember which seat we're in. Non-dealers get 13 tiles. Let's see what we could do for this first random pull. Oh, look at, we got flowers. If we're seat two, we've got our own seat flower. See that number two there? You get a point for that. So we have one fawn already. So I'm going to put the flowers right there and we'll get just three random replacements. Let's see what we got. We got a one crack and look at all these cracks that we have. If you play a hand with one suit, in this case cracks, with winds and dragons, that's a three fawn hand. Plus we have our, our fawn for the flower. But we do have here a pair. I would hold this pair, because we have a pair here too. If we get more pairs, if we get two more pair, we could play all pung, which is all three of a kind. So these would be discards right here. There we go. So these I would throw away first. Hold this, try to fill in these cracks because it'd be better to play a half flush. That's what I would do here. If you would do something different for this, let me know. You'd think, well, why not, why not play all three in a sequence? This could maybe be the pair. This could be a chi or a chow, I should say. This could be a chow. Uh, let's see, that's isolated. This is isolated. And this could be a chow. So there's some potential chows, but an all chow hand is only one fawn. And we have a two flower here, which is another fawn. Together, that makes only two fawn. So that's why I'm thinking if we play a half flush, we might be able to end up with a better hand. So I would hold these, try for half flesh, maybe all pung, get rid of these. Let me know what you think about that. If you would do something different, write it in the comment section. So let's go to south round. So let's see which seat we might be in for this one. So I rolled an 11. 11 is south. Let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11 is west. So I'm going to put up a 3. So we're in west seat. South round, west seat. Non-dealer, so we'll get 13 tiles. 
no flowers this time. So we're going to have to make use of these dragons. A pung of dragons, a three of a kind, that's a fawn all by itself. So we need to try to pair those up and maybe get pungs. We do have a fair number of dots here. So let's see what kind of chow potential we have. We have one isolated tile here. There's a chow right there. Potential chow here. This is isolated. And then all these are isolated too. Five discards. That's a bit rough. We have no flowers. That's one fawn right there. So I think if we try for a half flush with dots and honors, that's three fawn plus no flowers. So that would be a four fawn or four fawn hand. So I would throw these away first. If you would do something different, write it in the comment section. We could pung that maybe, chow that. fill in here, or we could chow that and leave that as a chow. There's a little bit of flexibility, but we need a lot more dots. Okay, we're going to go on to the west round. West round. Let's roll and see which seat we're going to be in for this random pull. Four. Seat. Well, it's eight, which is seat four. Okay. Let me mix these up. Okay, we get 13 tiles for West. So let's see what we can do for this round, West round. Only two honors. But we do have a good number of dots here. Potential pung, potential pung. These are isolated. We'd have to draw really well in these dots and honors, but that's what I would go for. Half flush with dots. Half flush with dots. Get rid of these right away. Even though there is some chow potential in here, whenever you mix suits with chows, you drive your score down by three fawn. So I would discard these, five discards. That's gonna be a long shot for this hand. Let's do the last random pull, north. And let's see, we're gonna be in seat nine. So eight is north, nine is east. So we get one extra tile to the side. Oh, we got our seat flower, one. If we're the dealer, we just got our seat flower, one. We do have two others with a two and a three, so those are not gonna help with score. So let's get three random replacements. Okay, now let's see what we have to work with. We have one honor. I'm hoping we'll have pairs in here. I don't see too many pairs. Two pair, two pair, that's it. Because I was thinking that we could play all Pung. Okay, so we have most, we have an even number of cracks and dots. I think I would try to force all Pung. Force all Pung, that's three Fawn and then the flower would be uh, four fawn. So that's what I would try to do here. I'd probably throw the nine away first because it could be used in an honor hand. Honors are ones and nines and wins and dragons. So I would just try to draw four pairs if I ended up collecting cracks because there's a, a pair in here, I might sacrifice 
the five bam and try for a half flush, I would start by throwing the nine and slowly but surely come into these tiles here. Maybe even throw the four first because that way if we start drawing dots, actually if we were in dots with honors, we'd have to sacrifice two pair. So I think I would hold to that original thought, get rid of the nine and start throwing these away and hope to pair up and play all pung. If you have a mahjong set at home, give random pulls a try. Do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, roll the dice to see which seat you would be in for each of the random pulls. That way it kind of um, keeps the variables fresh and it helps you with your scoring. It helps you learn the scoring. Speaking of which, there's a link below the video to a PDF with a scorecard that you can download from my website. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing and click the bell so you get notification for when I post new videos. That way you won't miss any opportunities to learn a new style. Maybe pick up on an insight of the game that might give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.